Hello, friends! Welcome to the technically October in November meeting for the Interest Other Book Club. Hi, Bible Club! Hello, welcome. We'll give another few minutes for everyone to start trickling in. Welcome to my channel. I'm Steph. You know me. I guess we'll go around and say hi to our hosts. Thanks for being here. I can do this. Jessa. There we go. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jessa from Gavin with Jessa, and I know we missed a month, or not a month, just like by like a week or so, but I'm happy to be back and talking about this book. I'll bring it back down. That one's always easy. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Melody from Strawberry Eleven Books. Do a bunch of vlogs, and yeah, I'm excited to be here in November. See y'all mm -hmm. twice in November. To mm -hmm. Matt. Oh, exciting. <laughs> Hey, I'm Max from Max Reads, do single book reviews. Sorry we missed a week. We know you missed us loads and loads, but we're back now. Yay! The squad unites. Hi, hey, Hello! Yeah. Hey, Natalie! Yay! Hi, hello, hello. people! Yay! All right, so before we get started talking about an unkindness of ghosts, which was our pick for October, let's just briefly chat about what's going to be happening for November. Oh, I will say that it took twice to read it. Do you know? Whoa. Okay. Okay. You're going to have to explain as soon as yes. we get started. <laughs> Already interested. Yes. So for the month of November, we're reading Iron Widow. On Max's channel, Ooh, so if you want uh, to join us, <laughs> if you want to join us, definitely go check out um, everyone's linked in the description below, along with the Discord. If you want to come, give us book suggestions and chat with us. Can I just say how it's much I am in love with this cover, though? Ah! I love that. It's amazing, amazing. This is all I want in life is to be a, a cow. Um, I love cows, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that author so. posts cosplays of her own characters on her Twitter, and it's really cool. Oh, yes, really? I love them for this. It's so cool. I think they are also a YouTuber. I could be I think they do YouTube, yeah. I think wow. they do. Yes. So sci-fi, YA. There's Mecca. They're giving me <laughs> we know Stephen vibes. Hello. There's double pilots, you guys. I'm stoked. Okay. Anyway. Hell yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Should we start with, can we start with non-spoilers? Is that possible? I guess going? with just like <laughs> reviews and what we thought and stuff. Mm. I guess that's the best way to go about it. So Yeah. Okay. Should we go around with a star rating? Yes. Mm. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I really like this book. I enjoyed it the entire time. It kept me enthralled. Um, I gave it four stars, probably leaning towards like four and a half, but I did draw it back a little bit due to pacing issues that I saw. Okay. I gave it... I think I ended up giving it 3.5, but after like a week, it might drop down to three. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember much of the book anymore, and I feel like <laughs> That might say something about it, or maybe it's just me and it's a damn <laughs> season. So, but yes, I think that's valid though. For me, it was it just scraped into being a three star. Ooh, okay. It would have been a two, but it just scraped into three. Ooh, valid. Okay. Okay. So, objectively, I want to give this a four. Subjectively. For reasons similar to what Justice said about pacing, I want to give this a three. Okay. That's where I'm at. Um, but ooh, we've got a range. I like that for us. <laughs> we never have a range, or at least yes. as big of one. I love it. I love it. Uh, easy, I was planning for zero to NYC, 12 hours. So it's still my opinion, plus my AG show. When I got my more books, I've Listen, going book shopping, <laughs> I totally don't blame you. Um, got a little hype, so I'll try to return to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool so um where should we start i'm jesse you brought up pacing do you want to explain a little bit what was it about the pacing for you um and i've been reading other people's reviews as well and i think 
some people either get like really hooked in the beginning and then just kind of find it slowing and dying off, which is what I found. Some people like weren't picked up in the beginning from other reviews, but started to like it at the end. I really liked it from the beginning. I think the main character, Astrid, or Esther, um, really just like spoke to me because she was just so sciencey and I loved it. And, um, but then like, so I was trapped in the beginning, but then like towards the end, I just kind of like, it just kind of faltered a little bit. And I think like the very end just kind of came out of nowhere. And I was like, wait, whoa, whoa like what just, what just happened here? But it was also enough to keep me wanting more. I felt similarly. I felt like I was reading two books at the same time mm -hmm. um, because it there it would switch between these sections that were much more heavy on the physics and the medical science and those things, which I loved. And then I felt like it would immediately flip, turn off and flip a different switch where we're talking about culture and class and. Um, okay. just you know this world building and so because it felt like I was flipping between the two I wish there was a little bit more of a merger between those things and there weren't such large gaps in between the two and I loved it for totally different reasons but because of that feeling like there was a lot of separation and chunking between the two topics um, that's where the pacing was off for me. Yeah, I, I get what you mean about two different stories. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. For me, I felt like there was so much going on in every single chapter that was completely unrelated to the background story that was happening. There mm -hmm. was like so much little things being thrown at me in the foreground that didn't tie into the main thing going on in the background. Um, but yeah, pacing, definitely what Jester said. Um, yeah, I feel like the pacing of the book was just kind of off for me. Mm. I have like I have so many notes about this book and I think <laughs> I feel like I give a lot of marks for when a story is when you cannot remove a story from the environment it's in when mm. the environment is so integral to the story but I think that this one you could have this exact same story anywhere and the mm. sci-fi element like nothing was lent to the story by it being sci-fi mm. You know what, on that same note, tell me if you disagree, but I feel like this was a perfect fusion between Django, you guys ever watch Django? Mm -hmm. Okay, Django and that movie where they're on the train in the snow, is it Splinter? Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. If you could combine Django and Snowpiercer, I feel like this would be... I definitely that. agree with Snowpiercer. Definitely yeah. agree. Yeah, and I think this may be another subjective reason why I... I want to give it a three, even though I really enjoy the writing and there's other things about it that I did enjoy. I think that the setting is not one of my favorite settings. I'm not, and this yeah. is probably a thing that I, even though Snowpiercer, I think is a good movie. There's a reason it's, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's that whole class system of like division of sections in this dystopian like, it's a very isolated setting and this clear division. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that setting. But. With stories like this, it does feel like they have a very, very, like, social agenda, the story. Mm -hmm. But, like, it is not subtle at mm -hmm. all. Like, going right. in is, like, this is the message of this story. Like, class system, bad. Like, racism, bad. And it's like, yeah, we've, we've had this story like a hundred times in various settings. Mm -hmm. I don't know, for me, I feel like I wanted something new and fresh from it, but I didn't get something new and fresh. Do you mm -hmm. know the ending I was expecting to this book? Did you ever see that movie Pandorum? No. So it's like set on a spaceship where um, this guy wakes up from cryo sleep and the spaceship is all like, whoop, whoop, alarms going off and everything's black and there are these monsters running around the spaceship and like it turns out that he, he thought there was like still six months to go till their destination but it turns out they had crashed and they had been there the whole time I thought that the ending was going to be that they were already there and there was no like in space and it was just a system contained to like keep this class inside it and subjugated like in some weird freaking zoo I don't know yeah that I feel like I was really expecting that Ooh, that would be really interesting. That's interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna write that down. What's it called? Pandorum. Pandorum. Yeah. With the M. Yep. Got it. 
It's a good film. Check that out. I already watched Moon. <laughs> I've got oh. a list of movies that Max is making me watch. Moon is such a yeah, good film. I feel film. like so Max good. has all the books and movie recommendations. <laughs> this, this is just another way of saying Max has no life. <laughs> Like, at all. <laughs> Got you. Coming in clutch with the recommendations. Alex says, as a character driven reader, this was one of my favorites last year. Okay, five stars, mostly just 100%. That, so that's why, objectively, I want to give this a four star because I feel like the characters were well developed. I really enjoyed that we got some point of views from other characters that are not just Aster. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot about. Um, I was interested in the way that they maintained this system as far as race relations and keeping that power um, dynamic for such a long amount of time. Um, yeah. So th for those reasons, I agree. It was, ama it was amazing, but just, I think it's more of a, it's a taste and expectations thing for me as well. I always feel like, with sci-fi that is set so far in the future and does talk about like a class slash race divide it feels very pessimistic hmm. to me and hmm. like i can see where it comes from yeah. yeah is it saying that this is how it's always gonna be that the author has no faith that things will ever change is it i feel like the author really believes that the baseline state of humanity is one of prejudice and that we're never going to climb past that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might depend on the economic structures that we have in place. Like if capitalism is still at the forefront, mm. then probably no, or maybe, I don't know. But I don't know that that was the intention of the author either way, because it felt more of it was a reflection on history rather than a projection of what can or will be yeah i don't know i think i would have believed it more as like a reflection if they had given more of an explanation as to how that divide began on the ship mm. because there is no background to it That's at all true. it's like you're on a ship bam there's slaves bam there's slave drivers mm. and it's like how did we get here though if it's a, a society that is advanced enough to make a generation ship why are they going to regress to a like such a backward state? Unless because it's so insular and because it's been so many generations removed from the original generation that placed them on this ship, if that's just a natural uh, state of society to revert to this clear division of race and class. And that would be the pessimistic part that I assume that you're referring to. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. But then, on the other hand, you do have the kind of metaphor in it being a generation ship of losing sight of your end goal. Mm -hmm. Like, in a generation ship, the people that got on it are never going to see the end of that journey. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a metaphor in the book of losing direction and, like, not, not being able to keep to the track that you were meant to be on. Mm-hmm. You know what? Hold on, I have a book recommendation. Wait, I gotta remember. Who wrote it? Wait. I read a book last year. Oh, I'll find it. Keep keep talking. <laughs> There's another book that's made me think of. Again, just some other things. I think, like, when I think about, like, why I knocked it down and, like, mentioning of pacing, I think this is River's uh, first book their debut book so i do sometimes give i think i just like to give credit where like i don't know i just like to think more positively i always want to be like but you know it was this so i think because it was a debut maybe there were some issues with um pacing um because it was like the first book they ever wrote so was it a self pop oh, that's a, that great, is a question. great question i do not know i don't know I'd be interested to know if it was self-pub. But the one I'm about to recommend was a self-pub. It's Okay, it's called Forgive Us by E.T. Gunnarsson. Um, hey. And I read this last year, but it's, it kind of follows a dual timeline with something similar, where it's like the first half is more of a Western post-apocalyptic um, 
survival story in the desert and then the second timeline is on a ship that's very ice ins uh, insulated like this hmm. and we kind of don't know what the end goal of the people on the ship are and the people on the ship are kind of what's that movie with the clones is it the island where the clones. yeah there's like people who are clones but they're actually being used for organ harvesting for the rich Oh, I know the one you mean. What movie? Squid is Game. That? Wait, Squid. I haven't seen Squid Game. <laughs> what? Uh, um, but yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of got those two timelines going and kind of questioning like where does humanity go from here? Hmm. Uh, I would say if if you enjoyed this, you might also enjoy that. I'm checking that out. Um. Hold on, let me look through my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I did write notes. <laughs> I probably no. should have written more notes. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I agree with the pace. I think my pacing, it was like a bell curve for me. Like, I wasn't really into it in the beginning, and I got really into it. And then the ending, I was like, kind of lost. I was like, there's so much happening. I was a little confused. <laughs> but, yeah. How did you guys feel about aster as a main character i personally really love aster i just want to protect loved her i just saw so much of me in her more for the the love of science kind of thing um i think i read in a review that aster's supposed to be like autistic mm -hmm. and um and that it, i'm i am not but i have had family members that are so i was able to connect with that a little bit more as well so that's also why i really liked her Someone in the Discord actually clarified that this is an own voices because the author, <laughs> I believe, is also um, autistic. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, loved Aster and just felt for them and just was like, I want all the pain and suffering to stop. <laughs> I feel like the, the rep didn't feel like it was ticking boxes, which was nice. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes rep can feel like that, but it didn't in this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. I wrote, oh, I wrote this note. I said, sometimes it's hard to tell whether a sci-fi book uses the world we live in now to extrapolate a future or uses the future to showcase current problems. I thought it was the second one when I was reading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm. Um, so should we jump into spoilers? Yeah. 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 Are there any other non-spoilery things that we want to say? If anyone has any questions in the chat, definitely let us know. Um, okay, so we're going to jump into spoilers. So, how did you guys feel about the whole mom situation? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and I think that's also why I'm knocking it down from like, like instead of rounding up to five, I'm rounding down to four because honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I also don't know. <laughs> yeah. One thing I think is is interesting is that because of it, this will be relevant because of Asta's um, inability to take anything other than literally. Like, it has to be, like, laid out very clearly for Asta to understand. Nothing is ambiguous in the book. But that means that as a reader, because you're seeing it through Asta's eyes, you get almost nothing in the way of foreshadowing. Like, even with the codes and stuff, it had to be explained by Giselle. And I feel like everything that we would have seen as a reader, like, needed to pick up on slowly over the course of the book had to be laid out for us in the same way as being laid out for Asta. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, I don't know, it felt kind of clunky to me, but I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because you're like seeing it through the, the eyes of somebody who would see it in that way. Which is part of the reason why I enjoyed the writing yeah. structure, because me it too. felt realistic to, from what I understand as someone who works with uh, individuals who are autistic in the way that things need to be um, in order for them to process clearly. And um, it, it just, it felt very genuine. 
<laughs> and I think that clunkiness was a necessity because yeah. that's where the rawness came in. Do you think the clunkiness was deliberate though? I feel like the author, yes, I think yeah. so. And I don't think that's just up, up because of that, the fact that this is an own voices book. I feel like it was very deliberate because there were, I think in the sections that we saw with the other points of view from hmm. um, Theo and what was the other one? The aunt? Oh. Her name. Um, no. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, the just the the shift in writing style, I think, is evidence of that it was intentional, at least for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, and I think that was really a fun way to kind of see other people's perspectives and then recognize more what kind of a character Aster is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I like that too, especially with sci-fi, if I'm not familiar, I kind of like it when things are kind of more laid out for me personally when I'm reading the story, but then now looking back on it and realizing this is own voices, I'm like, this makes a lot more sense on why it is written like this. And now I enjoy it more. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, also the rawness and the clunkiness in regards to just the, cause this is technically classified as a horror Okay. I, Wait, I it is? I think. Let me double check that. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw this. Huh. That's what is a horror. I mean, it felt like it had horrific aspects to this, so I wouldn't be surprised if it is because of mm. the amount of torture that's mm. involved. And yeah, I think. I don't know if, if gore always equals horror, though. Right. But I mean, the. Um, at least there are certain aspects of like women's horror or when it comes to like the trigger warning uh, for rape and things like that mm -hmm. that were mentioned quite frequently and also Giselle's uh, mental state and suicidal tendencies it um of ghosts I thought Giselle was the the best written character because you could okay. clearly see that there was like a real progression in what the character was like from start to finish, and you mm -hmm. really saw her change. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's coming up as dystopian fiction, science fiction on Google. Okay, so maybe I saw it somewhere else. I don't know, but I think it, for, at least for me personally, it could easily slip into a horror genre. I can see that, yeah. Because it's examining the atrocities of just, like what's happened with uh, colonialism and uh, it's just uh, the pain I felt listen, <laughs> and the nervousness that I felt every time that they would have the uh, what's it called the call to curfew was mm. it curfew mm -hmm. yeah so. and just knowing that something horrible was going to happen mm. that anxiousness. Do you guys remember Flick? Flick <laughs> made me really sad. Flick. Flick. What did you guys think of Theo? I like Theo. Yeah, I like Theo. Mm -hmm. I really like the relationship that uh, they have with Aster, and I think it was it was just enjoyable to read. Whenever like the two of them were on the page together, uh, my heart was just happy because I'm just like I love this. So, <laughs> yes. and, and then like, in the end, when she was leaving, when Aster was leaving, I was like, no. <laughs> and he was like, I'll come for you if you don't come back or whatever. I was like, my heart. Oh no, go with her. <laughs> So sad. So, okay. So in the end, they are precious. Um, so in the end, Aster ultimately, I think, ends up on Earth, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so we don't really get any kind of information I think as to what caused them to leave Earth in the first place, which I think goes back to what you were saying, Max. I feel like it, in sci-fi terms, there are too many holes in this for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, there's a lot of things where I'm like, if this was a story in another setting, and I can believe the like, I don't know why the situation was in this setting. 
Mm. And for me, that kept making me question things because I was trying to figure out why. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like there were a lot of sci-fi holes that I kept picking up on that, I don't know. I feel like I was really fussy with this one. It kind of distracted from my enjoyment of it a little bit. Oh, that's valid, though. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Um, I was really interested in why did we get an answer as to why they were taking away any boys that were born because all most of the individual or almost all of the individuals who were in the lower decks were all women right hmm. did we get an answer for that i don't think we did no. not that i can recall yeah not that i can remember <laughs> Okay, so that was one thing I was looking for, for an answer for from the beginning, and I don't think we got an answer to. I mean, we did get the explanation of Theo was actually the son of, is it the aunt? What's her name? The uh, aunt, yeah. 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 But then that was, the reason that he was taken away was because of who the father was, which elevated his status, right? Mm -hmm. But we didn't get an answer as to what happens to all of the other boys that are born from the rape and everything else that happens. Um, and also if there's no men, how are there, how are they continuing the line of slaves or is everyone that's born when, if everyone that's born is a product of this uh, physical abuse that's going on, how are they maintaining the bloodlines i'm that part i was a little confused on yeah if even if you separated two populations on a generation ship it would take like 20 years before you get mad inbreeding like mm -hmm. ridiculous inbreeding i was when i was trying to figure out why the divide would have happened i feel like there's maybe two options because there's one bit early on where they talk about religion and they say like we help them to not live in sin Mm -hmm. and I was like is it a critique of how religion is used to subjugate people but then when it's talking about the genetic abnormalities of the lower deckers was that an attempt to remove the people with abnormalities from a population to keep the main population abnormality free if that was the case then wouldn't we have seen um individuals in the upper decks having multiple ethnicities i don't know i don't know i just wanted explanation yeah no no that's, like, come on. <laughs> that's something that i wanted an answer to also so if anyone in the comments knows the answer to these questions please let us know let's know if we missed it <laughs> and yeah. there is no second book like a sequel to this, right? No, this is a standalone, I'm pretty sure. No! That was my next question. I didn't bother to look that up because I forgot. But, meh. Yeah, when you said it was a debut, I was like, a bunch of other books have come out already, so there must not be a sequel. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I'm trying to what else so Ghost, I don't. Let's see what else. Um, no, it's a standalone. Did it say in the book how long they had been on the ship? 325 years. Yep. Okay. But they still have lighters with butane in. <laughs> so they still I mean, have like fossil fuels and stuff. Yes, they do. And oh, there was one other thing. See, I didn't have <clears> this one. And there was one other thing I caught like that also. I was like, how do they still have this? Um, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I mean, unless... Wait, so was there a second... There was never a second ship, was there? I can't remember. I, can't no. remember. I don't think so. No, because when they, when they were talking about how they moved, how they were able to change direction, it's because they were pulling, they were doing a uh, gravitational push from a black hole that they were passing. Is that correct? That sounds right. Something okay. like that. Okay, so here's the uh, something that I didn't understand, and I don't think that they explained, is how fast the ship was going. 
or whether there's some astronomical event that happened to put a black hole in closer contact with our solar system because for in order for them to have had that happen 25 years ago and then in order to travel far enough to get close enough to earth for aster to make that trip hmm. they would have to be going super freaking fast but bear in mind though with mm -hmm. like stuff like the voyager probe mm -hmm. the it's it doesn't the speed you're going at doesn't matter in space it's how much you are accelerating right and if they've been accelerating for 300 years every single year would have been a faster speed than the last year so it would be like some exponential growth like the voyager was launched in like 60 something 70 something mm -hmm. it's outside 70, our solar system right yeah. and it, it is now going at one twelfth of light speed oh wow just after having accelerated for like 50 years that's true that makes total sense um but even so even so <laughs> even so i feel like that's still much farther than it should be for 25 years and wasn't there some something at one point towards the end where they were talking about deceleration in order to go into orbit so wouldn't that also take a large amount of distance that they would have had to start Quite it early would take in the trip. exactly the same amount of time as you had been accelerating for. Right, and that's and so that's they what would I'm need saying. to decelerate for three hundred years. Right, <laughs> so then it doesn't. That's the that's what I'm saying. It doesn't mat, line up with me as to how they would have been able to do that and for her to be able to get to Earth. I feel like fifty percent of sci-fi authors are gonna listen to us and be like, "Man, I love these guys," and like fifty percent of sci-fi <laughs> authors are gonna be like, "Oh, fuck you." <laughs> Picking holes in the science. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's science. Enjoy the plot. <laughs> um, yeah, and what? And I mean, when was the last time we read a hard sci-fi book? I would say Expanse. That's what I was thinking. Expanse. Was thinking. Okay, so like, I needed this. I wanted this. I got really hyped about that. And that's why I wanted more of that merging between the discussions on class and culture and that because it felt like all of the hard sci science discussions were in specific places within the book. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get getting to talk about that again and having to wait like 50 to 100 pages for that to happen. <laughs> um, goes back to pacing. But yeah, that's a feeling. Uh, even though I don't get that. Uh, exactly. <laughs> read what else I I was like, I didn't even think about that. That's a bit too much physics for me. I know. I, I was just enjoying my my read. <laughs> and now I like picking apart the holes too, just because just knowing how much deeper that this can go and how much, like, it's not just a book. Like, we can actually think about this outside of the text and kind of relate it to real world things. That's always what I try to preach in my student uh, teaching classes. Like, how can we relate this to the real world? How can we actually think about this? Even though everything in biology is on like a microscopic level, at least what we're currently learning. I'm like, how can we relate this to the real world? And so I like that we're able to do this now. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I was a character driven reader so I could look over the holes. <laughs> <laughs> I exactly. wish I wish I could just ignore stuff, but I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Did you catch that they have horses on this ship as well? Listen, yeah, there's there's things here. <laughs> just <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna pretend that that's not a thing. For me, the, the the biggest thing where I was like, I feel like there's a lot in this book I could accept, and I feel like the whole way through I was like, oh. This story could take place anywhere. It has an agenda. It's not very subtle. And then with Asta being sent, the first time she goes to the farming, it's sugarcane. I'm like, <laughs> this is not like a quiet metaphor. It's very literal. Yeah. <laughs> so would you have accepted it more if it was another resource? Oh, it's it's just lending to me, like, not being able to reconcile the situation with the setting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it is in the, it's in the synopsis, though. It says something about being... Uh, oh, yeah, much like the Annabellum the South. Annabellum South, yeah. <laughs> oh. 
So, I mean, I kind of had that ex- expectation going in, but I can see what you're saying. It very much is like, it's like, here's another scoop. Yeah. History. <laughs> oh, and now I'm reading this too with like the mythical promised land. I'm like, is that like the north? <laughs> How like escaping to the north was like mm. good? And I was like, maybe things were better. Maybe things weren't better. It was like, you never knew until you got there. Whoa. Mm-hmm. See, even though it's right there in front of my face, it still just like oh. went right over my head until now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I almost like, I don't really read the synopsis as a book. <laughs> There was that. And then I wish I had annotated this because I had thoughts about the, was it Baby, the name of the fusion reactor? Oh, the reactor? Sun. Yeah, yeah. The sun, yeah. Yeah. Was that their engine? I don't think it was the engine. So then why? Why? <laughs> also, also, here's another why for you. Um, this, they said that this, the slave decks are closest to Baby. Well, yeah, it's like that, water in there or something like that. They say that the slave decks are closer to baby, but also mm-hmm. the slave decks are the coldest decks. Wait, what? I didn't catch that. Wait, they said that really? Yeah. Wait, yeah, say that one more time. <laughs> no, they I, said okay, that the, the lower decks are closest to baby, uh-huh. but then there's like a heat problem in the lower decks and there's no yeah. heat there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're next to the sun, a sun, a real one. But then there was... With lower decks, do you think that in space, because there is no down, it's just hammering in the fact that this is that is arbitrary completely? Probably, because I think that they had the ability to um, disseminate where the heat went, because Baby was <clears throat> where whatever the agricultural center was. Yeah. Hmm. Right? So I think so. So it might not, it may not have necessarily been that there was a... It was just explaining it as upper and level for the sake of explaining the class system. Just give me a picture of that spaceship. That's all I want. <laughs> I mean, that picture. would have been cool because didn't yeah. the mom have a map that she drew or yeah. something? I would have liked to see that map. Yeah, yes. Next edition, map on the inside <laughs> cover. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so then technically, is the deck... Wait, because they described if I didn't imagine if I did not imagine this correctly, the agri- the farming room or where that had all the different levels mm-hmm. um, of fields was this dome. Yeah, I thought it was like the center of the ship, and they took like elevators up to the agricultural center. Was what I thought. I feel like the sun. The I. From how I was picturing it in my head, Baby is in the middle of the ship. Mm. And then I think that the whole agricultural thing, instead of being a dome, I pictured it as like a cylinder. So they're like farming around the outside of the cylinder and Baby is in the middle of that. Mm. And then the decks are like around the edges of the cylinder. Okay. But then the decks rotated, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Which which makes me think it's like a circle ship. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I was thinking of it as a as a dome. Okay. Because that or, would explain how they have gravity anyway. If the ship is spinning. Right. Right. That makes sense. So then that goes back to the question we just asked of what is a lower and upper deck if it's a do- if it's cylindrical. <laughs> we need maps. <laughs> Diagrams. <laughs> Diagrams. All the pictures. Yes. Um, Fun. Oh, um, sorry. The um, I know that the lieutenant right ended up being the ultimate bad guy. Yes. Hmm. At the end of this, I kind of wish I got to see more of what's his name that was the first original bad guy before a lieutenant took over. Nick, uh, Nick something. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see more of them. Yeah. Hmm. This could have been a longer book with yeah. more POVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I was surprised like when I first picked it up that the font is like pretty 
good size. Like, it's not, like, small or anything. Hmm. It's not huge, but it's definitely bigger than I expected it to be. And it's only, like, what, 350 pages? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not a long book. Mm -hmm. Hi! Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. 500 pages, more POVs, diagrams, explanation of the ship structure, and... Mm -hmm. How do we get here? That's what we want. Yeah, how do we get here is my biggest my biggest qualm with this book. I think if we had had, like, even if there was some bit where um, just as epigraphs for each chapter, there was a snippet of history mm. that, like, mm -hmm. explained how... I think how we got here is the reason that I gave this such a low mark. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I would really... I feel like reading all the sci-fi we have as a book club this year, I really like little epigraphs before chapters. Yeah. Epigraphs do a lot, yes. Or if we got more... I feel like the, the letters from the mom could have been an easy segue into giving us the answers that we were looking for. 100%. Yeah. yeah. We could try to figure out the clues ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would have been the counterbalance to the straightforward structure of reading from Aster's perspective. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because the, the epigraphs or the letters wouldn't have been from any other perspective than the mums who was completely understanding everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, one, one other thing I noticed was that there were a lot of conversations in this book that got deliberately cut off by something happening. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know hmm. whether that was just to it almost felt like it was just to stretch the story to be longer. Hmm. Were those conversations that you're thinking of happening from Aster's perspective? Yeah, I think they were. So I wonder if that is because we're getting it from Aster's perspective and we are reading from what they're hyper-focusing on. Oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Because if they're right. not, if we're not getting any kind of other descriptors as to what's happening around them, then they are possibly <clears throat> perceiving it as I'm in the middle of something, and something else is coming up that's taking my full attention away from the conversation we just had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right. Which goes. Back. I know I sound. Sorry. You're good. I was gonna say I know I sound really salty about this book, <laughs> but like I want to like reiterate: this is not a badly written book at all. No. This is a really well written book. It's just me having issues with like wanting a fuller world mm -hmm. build. Is my main problem. And normally I would go for things like that too. I definitely like plot driven books better than character driven books because sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like character driven can just kind of be like, okay, I learned about all these people. That's great. Like but why? Yeah. And I know this one's probably, this one's definitely character driven, but I don't know what, I think I just fell in love with everyone. So I think that's why I really liked it too, just because I liked, I liked Aster. I, it's always good to have a good protagonist that you're getting a like P POV from. And I don't know, I just loved everyone. And I think that's why I kind of glossed over more of like the plot issues that I would normally pick out in something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, just because I liked everyone a lot more and it grabbed me from the beginning. So I think that's why I personally really like this. But I do like talking about um, potential plot holes and things like that just because, you know, there's two sides of books. We need a plot and we need characters. Like That's what we need. So even though I still think very highly of this book, it's good that I can see it from y'all's perspective with issues with the plot potentially. So I like it. I do think that for for a book that dropped you in with no history, it did a good job of building characters that were fully developed and you didn't need to see grow. They were like, there, this character is a fully formed thing. Like, nothing needs to happen to it. This is this is Asta. Accept it. Mm. But, yeah, no, I thought all the characters were really well written. And I thought because of the own voices, they all had really unique voices when you got their, like, point of view pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. character driven readers I, yes definitely you will love this plot driven readers just change your expectations a little bit 
and you'll probably enjoy this more. Float driven reasons. Just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Max, calm down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, get that, I feel I, like I heard a lot about this book like being mentioned <laughs> on BookTube. So I came in with like a lot of expectations. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm more of a plot driven reader. So it was like, aww. Same. Yeah, I'm definitely a plot driven reader, which is why I want to give this a three. But I really enjoyed this author's writing style. I really want to read other stuff from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also really enjoyed these characters despite the, the plot hole. So I still want to give this a four. Mm-hmm. I also think this could be a really good gateway into sci fi from YA. Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yes. I could see that. And I'm all for getting people into sci fi. Yes. So. Okay. We could just add this to the list of yeah. books that we're going to recommend one day in a, in a yep. video. We'll do a big video on it. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Any other points that we would like to discuss? Anyone in the chat have anything that you'd like to for, for us to all discuss or questions or anything? Um, I will say I was getting a little worn down in the middle with the pain that I was feeling for Aster and for Giselle and just the tor- amount of torture that was going on. Mm-hmm. like, And I think that was probably the point is because it was mm-hmm. really hammering in the atrocities of the antebellum South and what p- could potentially could happen if this history was to repeat itself. But after a while, I was like, oh my God, the pain. Can, can we just, I want to know how the ship, where's the ship going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there was an element of like i get it now i get it okay mm-hmm. yeah. i guess the characters are yeah, the why from these inherent characters there's my reason to read so i'm not interested in the plot why is that makes total sense mm-hmm. absolutely yeah and for their well-being too which is why the ending was so sad <laughs> <laughs> I need to see Aster and Theo reunite. Yes. Can we get a second epilogue, yes. please? <laughs> Just wanted at least that little snippet of happiness for them. Yeah. <laughs> this book was just a lot of sad. It was a lot of sad. But I was really interested in, like, the poisoning or whatever that the... What was it? Nicolaius or whatever their name Uh was had because the jagged pupils things I was like that sounds so cool I want an illustration of that yes is that founded in anything actual biology people (laughs) is that a real thing (laughs) does that come where does that come from I don't know but a jagged pupil can happen if you're here's something gross are you ready your (laughs) your iris that surrounds your eye is a is a sphincter muscle just like your butthole Mm -hmm. and like it can rupture Mm. and if if the sphincter ruptures and like tears then it can look like your pupil is all janky oh it's like pupil hemorrhoids (laughs) (laughs) this is the second time this come up in a live today okay (laughs) sweet dreams everyone Oh god, I'm about to, oh oh I just looked at pictures. Oh that's weird. <laughs> um not cool. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I'm thinking I'm still thinking about Natalie's comment about the why for character driven readers versus the why for plot driven readers. I feel like this would make a really good video discussion. Mm-hmm. I'd watch yeah. that. <laughs> See the poisoning was due to radiation sickness. Oh, interesting point the best radiation sickness i've ever seen anything was in moon oh my gosh you guys gotta watch that movie <laughs> if you it's so good so good what is it moon moon yeah <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> mm-hmm. just, just don't google um <laughs> jagged peoples because that'll also haunt you but anyway <laughs> yeah. cool um anything else that i want to talk about there was there was something in the beginning i remember when they were 
doing some world building where they were talking about was it decks not only divided by class and race but also by gender mm-hmm. there was something about people who identified by different genders being on specific decks and that maybe I that's think where was, all the boys go but then oh, flick oh wait maybe because i remember flick was mentioned on being on a different deck because yeah i think people i think flick's deck they use they them <clears throat> pronouns which i thought was really interesting yeah Hi, Michael. <laughs> yeah, please don't. That's a nice solid oh advice I've heard all day. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, so maybe that's where the voice go. But if it is the case, then I would have liked an explanation of that because it seemed to reinforce the idea that everyone who was not part of the Upper Decks was female, of a female sex identifying or gender, I think. Or I just could be completely lost. I have no idea. Unless that's another layer to the whole segregation and oppression thing, and they're literally just kept down there for like breed stock. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's just super fucked up instead of just regular fucked up. Mm. Just an extra layer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Any other thoughts? Questions? Comments? All right. I think I think we're good. If no one in the comments has any questions, if you don't let us know. Um, so once again, we are reading Iron Widow for next month over on Max's channel. So definitely check it out. Yay! Yay! This is so exciting. Do you guys want me to read the synopsis? Oh, yeah. That's yes. Okay, cool. So, for Iron Widow, it says In Huasha, the highest honor for a young girl is to be selected as a concubine pilot. Supporters paired up with male pilots to power up chrysalises, the giant transforming mechas that humanity relies on to battle the massive aliens that lurk behind the Great Wall. I'm so excited. Oh my God. But the honor often ends in death, and when 18 year old Zetian's sister is killed by an ace male pilot, Zetian signs up to avenge her. The vengeance is swift, brutal, and unexpected, leaving Zetian labeled as an Iron Widow, a much feared kind of female pilot who can sacrifice the boy's power to power up chrysalises instead of the other way around. To tame her unnerving yet un to tame her unnerving yet invaluable mental strength, she is paired up with Li Ximin, the strongest and most controversial male pilot in Huaxia. But now that Zietin has a taste of power, she will not cower so easily. She will miss no opportunity to leverage her and Shimon's combined might and infamy and survive attempt after attempt on her life until she can figure out exactly why the pilot system relies so heavily on destroying girls' lives and dismantle it for good. Dun, dun, dun. That sounds so I'm good. good. I'm, good. Tell you, I'm psyched for this one. It sounds really I'm good. I'm really excited for it. I'm hyped. I'm it's like, like there's so many elements into it. Yes. I have high hopes for this one. Me too. Super excited. So Yay! Ready. Cool. Well, I guess that's really it, right? Yep. Good. I think so. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming to this month's live show. And we will be announcing soon in the Discord when the date is for November's live show. But I guess we'll catch you later. Bye, everybody.